Hello and welcome back to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. My name is Steven and thank you for joining me again as we continue work on the Interceptor. In the last episode, we got the transmission swapped from the old engine over to the new engine. We also got a lot of the other parts pulled off of the old engine, like the exhaust manifolds and the wiring harness. Still a few odds and ends that I need to take off of there. But today, we're gonna go ahead and get started moving the rest of things over. Need to go ahead and get the wiring harness installed on the new engine, and then I need to get the exhaust manifolds added. I'll go ahead and show you what we've got going on here. All right, so as you saw at the end of the last episode, we've got the transmission moved over to the new engine. Now, a few of you pointed out to me that I went about doing the transmission swap the wrong way, and that the torque converter should have been added to the transmission before the whole thing was added to the engine. And um, I'm just gonna own up my mistakes. I am new to automatic transmissions. I've literally never swapped one before this one. And so I didn't know that. And um, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and hope that everything's good. Uh, the transmission did go on there without a problem. I mean, we did have a few issues getting it on there at first, trying to get everything to kind of line up with the splines. Uh, but it did eventually go on there without a problem, and uh, we knew we had it on there right when it just kind of popped in there, and there we were. So it's seated on there. Now, I don't have it torqued up yet, so I'm going to do that today. So probably the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get uh, the transmission bell housing to, uh, to the block, get all those bolts uh, torqued up. Then over here, I have new exhaust manifolds. Uh, for uh, both sides and then um, a lot of the nuts for the manifold studs came off with the studs from the old engine. The new engine has all of its exhaust studs so I went ahead and just got a new set of uh, exhaust manifold st uh, stud nuts and uh, I'm going to use those as well. So over here on the new engine I'm going to start by torquing up the transmission bolts then I'm going to probably go ahead and uh, start working on the wire harness then the uh, new gaskets and move over the exhaust manifolds. I'm thinking about going ahead and leaving the transfer case off of the engine until after the engine's reinstalled. That'll just give us a little more room to work with and I don't see any reason why that'd be a problem. So uh, anyway, that's what we're gonna try to work on today. So in addition to getting all of this stuff moved over and getting the engine prepped and ready to go into the interceptor, I'm also going to go ahead and try to get uh, the engine bay of the interceptor prepped as well. You may remember that I mentioned before that I need to move over some lines, like some AC lines and stuff, get that stuff installed beforehand. I also need to kind of uh, repair the heat shield on the uh, firewall a little bit. It got uh, tweaked a little bit when we were pulling the old engine out. So I'm going to get the engine bay all prepped and ready to go, get the engine all prepped and ready to go so that the next day we're able to come out and just drop the engine in. Today I have a buddy coming who you guys haven't seen before. His name's Curtis. He's going to help me a little bit and uh, hopefully we can get all this stuff ready so next day we can go ahead and get the engine installed. And uh, I'll probably go ahead and make this video both days, prepping everything up and then also getting it installed so there's a little more um, actual content to this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Wish us luck.
All right, guys, that is where we're gonna call it for today. We've made a lot of progress and we've gotten the engine and the interceptor ready to put the engine back in uh, in the next part of this episode. So let me show you what we've been working on. All right, over here with the engine, we have the wiring harness on. We've got uh, some of our vacuum lines and cooling lines moved over. Our manifolds are on with their new um, manifold gaskets and nuts. Uh, we've got um, the transmission all torqued up and ready to go. And um, we've got uh, a few of the other accessories moved over as well. So that engine is now done. We will hang on to it just in case we need any little odds and ends off of it. But otherwise, we are done with this engine. And that one is prepped and ready to go back in the interceptor. Over here in the engine bay, still need to get the uh, spaghetti over there out of the way. But we have replaced this AC line so it's in there it's ready to go got things in there to kind of keep any junk from falling inside also went ahead and put some uh, heat insulation there on the firewall uh, the heat insulation that was already on there uh, we left it there but it was kind of torn when we were taking the engine out so I put that on there to kind of fix it up you'll never see it but I'll feel a little bit better about it being all uh, closed up and not uh, exposed any longer. So the engine bay is now ready for the engine and the engine is now ready for the engine bay. So it'll be just a few seconds for you, but it'll be another day or two for me. We'll get over here and we'll get this engine back into the interceptor. See you in a second. And we're back. All right, it is another day and I am ready to get this engine in. Doug's on his way. He'll be here in a little while. I'm going to take care of a couple of odds and ends, make sure I know where everything is. And uh, it's time to go ahead and start getting this engine put back into the interceptor. Wish us luck. Let's get started. <laughs> guys we have an engine in there the new engine is installed now Jace is still over here trying to tighten down one of the uh, transmission mounts over here they are almost impossible to get to uh, but while he takes care of that let me just show you what we've got going on over here uh, we've got this is the engine mount that actually broke off of the other engine and we've got that one fully installed uh, we've got the transmission mount reinstalled I was planning to put the alternator and the AC compressor on, and then of course the belt on uh, before we put the engine in so that it would be, uh, well I just figured it'd be easier while the engine was out, and it would be. But, um, you know, this is a wrecked vehicle and it was missing parts, so I did not have uh, the bolt necessary uh, to install the alternator. So I have that ordered, I should be able to get it tomorrow, and I'll just have to, uh, you know, probably take that wheel off to get in there and get that belt on, we'll figure that out. But a belt is a service item, so theoretically it should be doable while the engine is in. Now, the engine's still just a little bit, you know, tipsy, but it's solidly mounted on both sides. Uh, here in just a minute, I'm gonna crawl underneath there and tighten up the rear engine mount to the subframe. And uh, then we're gonna go ahead and throw the transfer case, which actually you can't see, it's over there. We're gonna throw the transfer case in it and uh, get at least that much done. Then the engine will be solidly mounted but boy, it feels good to have the engine, a good engine, in the interceptor for the first time since I've owned it. All right, let's keep going. All right, guys, after the initial excitement of having the engine in the interceptor, which is really cool, uh, we've run into just like one roadblock after another. Um, it would have been extremely difficult, if not impossible, to install the engine uh, the way we did with the transfer case still attached, uh, so we chose not to. Uh, but with that being said, getting it in after the fact was quite a challenge. And then of course, it's got coolant lines that run to it as well. And uh, there's just all sorts of things that we've been struggling with. So we've been working on it, wrenching on it for uh, probably close to two hours now. And we got the transfer case back in, but now getting the uh, coolant lines reattached and uh, some of the things that we need to uh, button up in there are just so tight uh, with the exhaust manifold and all that in there. Um, 
we're just in pain from laying on the, the concrete floor for all this time. So with that being said, we're calling it for today. Uh, when we come back, uh, hopefully tomorrow, uh, we will uh, probably have to go ahead and pull that rear exhaust manifold off so that um, we can actually reach all the bolts that we need to get everything buttoned up underneath there, get the exhaust manifold back on. And after that, it shouldn't be that much uh, trouble. Uh, you know, that's what I think right now anyway. <laughs> so with all that being said, tomorrow I'm going to pick up uh, the, the bolts and nuts I need uh, to install the accessories, the AC compressor and the alternator. And then we'll get back to work trying to get uh, the rest of the stuff with the transfer case buttoned up back there. So wish us luck on that. But uh, just like we did before, it'll be a few seconds for you and we'll be right back at it. And we are back. It is time to get this engine installed once and for all. We left off last time by trying to get the uh, transfer case mounted from underneath. We left it off to make it easier to set this thing in there, and it certainly did make it easier to set it in. Uh, but now we're running into issues with uh, getting the transfer case fully installed, um, partly because of just uh, space issues, uh, partly because you're working on your back. Um, so let me actually crawl under there and show you what we've got to work with. I'll take my light here, we'll go underneath and I'll show you what we're trying to do and why we're going to probably go ahead and just pull this engine back out. All right, I've crawled underneath the interceptor here and this is our transfer case and I've um, got it attached here to the side of the transmission, but um, as you can see, it is really tight in here. There's almost no wor room to work with here. One of the big things we ran into though, aside from just trying to get this in here, because we were able to actually move the whole engine here to try to get it in, uh, because I do not have this rear um, engine mount on at the moment. Um, so we were able to get it in there, but the problem is there are some really long uh, cooling lines. You can see the cooling lines running up this way. And the problem is getting them <laughs> getting them there uh, while still attached to the transfer case. So um, ultimately what we ended up doing was pulling the transfer case back out, taking the cooling lines off, which is from a little panel that attaches right up here, um, right here, to the side of the transfer case, took that whole thing off, and we were able to fish them up in there and get the transfer case installed the way it is. But now we've got to get this all reinstalled. And uh, the problem there is, well, our <laughs> exhaust manifold is in the way and we can't actually even get those bolts in there. Not to mention there's also a mount that goes up in there and uh, some other odds and ends <laughs> that need to go in as well. So, uh, for all of these reasons, and you can see just how tight it is up in here. Uh, these are those cooling lines that come out the top there and run to the front of the vehicle. Uh, but for all of these reasons, um, it is probably just gonna be a whole lot easier to go ahead and just try to pull this thing, the whole motor back out, get the transfer case properly installed out of vehicle, and then uh, once all that's done, get it back in here and uh, finish fully installing the engine. So that's where we're at. Doug will be here in a few minutes and we'll get started on that. Well, this is exciting. We uh, starting to make progress, and as you saw in the time last me working on this, uh, well, there's no, there's no, there's no light. Uh, all the lights are out. Power went out, uh, so we're completely without power here. Uh, I think we can still do what we need to do, but I apologize because the quality of the video, well, it's going to be dark. So we'll do what we can do, and uh, just bear with me. Apologize for it. Let's go ahead and get back to work. Doug's here now, so we can go ahead and get this thing up out of here.
Alrighty, engine is out in the dark, but we got it out nonetheless. This is really the source of all of our problems right here. Uh, this is where the cooling lines attach and then of course wind their way around the front or the side of the engine to the front. And we got most of these little bolts in, they're little Torx bolts. Um, probably could have gotten that one if we'd have worked at it. That one right there, that one was, I mean, you can see the clearance there. There's just no room to work. Um, so we may take this off and do that, or we may just take the transfer case back off. There's also a bracket that goes up underneath there. Uh, but in any case, we now have all the room we need to do what we need to do, get this ready, and then slap it back into the interceptor. So let's get started. Right, guys we are still working in the dark but we have the transfer case all buttoned up now this is just wrapped up in there to get it out of the way uh, but transfer case is all bolted up and uh, in place as are our cooling lines uh, as far as we can it attaches to the subframe over here um, manifold we did end up taking that off but that's been reinstalled got our bracket which you can't see but it's back behind there that I'm pretty confident we would never have gotten that on uh, with the manifold on which means it would have been even harder if we had tried to do it from underneath so uh, We've got everything on except for the lower engine mount uh, Which goes right here that engine mount uh, It then attaches to the subframe right there. We're gonna wait till it's in because it's kind of awkward and in the way uh, So we're gonna wait until everything is in that'll give us a little bit more freedom and then once it's in we'll crawl under there and do that and uh, we'll also have to plug these in. Those are for uh, the power steering lines. Other than that, we're pretty much ready. So uh, next thing to do here is put this, uh, the, put this engine back in, hopefully for good. Alrighty guys, we are done for this episode. We have the engine, as you can see over my shoulder there, fully installed. Well, the engine's fully installed. There's still things to hook up. Let me go ahead and show you what we got done today. All right, as you can see, the engine is fully installed, sitting properly. It is now stable in there uh, because we have um, uh, not only the upper engine mounts in, but we also have that rear one as well. Underneath there, uh, we got all of our uh, lines, uh, cooling lines and our um, electrical uh, connectors to the steering all hooked up. Got the rear drive shaft connected to uh, the transfer case, which is also fully installed. Up here in the front, we got the accessories for the alternator, the air conditioner installed and the new belt uh, put on as well. Got the throttle body installed over here. Got a few of the lines uh, hooked up over here. So this thing is pretty well set. Now, what do I need to do next time? So on our next episode, I get to start making sense of the electrical. I've got this spaghetti mess over here to figure out. Um, a lot of that is actually for lights and accessories and things that'll go here in the front. Um, there are still a few things to hook up, like over here where we've got the battery that's going to go there. There's, there's several grounds that need to be hooked up, so on and so forth. I've still got some air conditioning lines to hook up. I've got the one end that had to go in all the way in the back, but I've still got some air conditioning lines that will need to go in. Of course, the whole cooling system. Of course, before I can put the cooling system in, I need to put the front of the interceptor back on. So in the next episode, that's what I'll be working on. So thank you for joining me over the last few days as we've worked on this episode, getting the engine installed. I'm excited because this is a major hurdle, a major milestone uh, that we've accomplished. Stay tuned for the next episode because in the next episode, like I said, we'll be working on getting the rest of the electrical hooked up, getting the AC lines, the cooling system, all of that hooked up. And hopefully maybe by the end of the next episode, we'll actually be able to fire this thing up and hear it run with its new engine for the first time. I hope you're as excited as I am, so stay tuned for that next episode. Thank you again for joining me for this episode. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, then the bell so you can be notified each time I upload a new episode. Go ahead and drop a like on this video, that'll really help me out. 
and go ahead and drop a comment as well and tell me what you'd like to see me do on this interceptor as we get ready to start buttoning it up. While you're waiting for the next episode, go ahead and also like me and follow on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can follow me there and I'll post pictures and updates periodically uh, in between videos so you can stay posted on all the things I'm working on here at Crossroads Rebuild. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.